Today we will continue with the work with the waveguides. So I'm planning to finish the chapter today. So let me make a summary what we have done last time. So waveguide has a metal conductors and ends are open and the electromagnetic waves are transmitted by reflecting from the walls. So first we write the Maxwell's equations and we took the which said that there's no charge density and current density in, in the waveguide and we derived the Maxwell's uh, wave equations. Then we said that let us decompose the Maxwell's equations into two pieces. One is the longitudinal direction, is the propagation, net propagation, that is the Z in that case, and the other is the transverse. So what we do, if you look at your notes, we pick up the Faraday's equations, and here I omega represents the minus del over del T because the harmonic oscillating get the frequency omega, the waves. So we take the scalar product with the Z, that is the longitudinal component of the Faraday's equation, and then we look at the cross product of this equation with Z. So taking the cross product with the Z uh, gives us the transverse component of the Faraday's equation. And we do the same thing to the modified Ampere's law. Then we have the one scalar equation, del dot b is equal to zero. There's no magnetic monopoles, and you can write this scalar equation in two pieces, del dot b transverse plus del bz over del z is equal to zero, and del dot e transverse plus uh, del ez over del z is equal to zero. So then what we have done, we pick up these two equations and we write the transverse components of the electric field and magnetic field in terms of uh, Z components. So idea is simple. We have a wave equation. In the wave equation, vectorial, we have six equations, three for electric field, three for magnetic field. Instead of solving for six equation, we can solve the wave equation for the Z component of the electric field or uh, magnetic field. Then we can calculate the uh, transverse fields. So in order to make the problem is more simple, we will look at the, some specific modes of the waves. One simple mode is called TEM, transverse electromagnetic wave. Meaning is the following. The wave is propagated, but Z component and of the electric field and the magnetic field is zero. Okay? So in this kind of mode, EZ and BZ are zero. Okay? So basically that means that the wave is propagating, not reflecting from the walls as a geometry. So if you look at that simple mode, we can see that the following things. For example, for that one, for that one is useful. Maybe the, the, the other one also. If you look at that piece, you will say Bz is zero, and that means that Z dot curl of E is equal to zero, and that means that curl of transverse of E T E M, let me say E T M is equal to zero. That is the property of that equation. So just put B Z equal to zero, E transverse in that case E T E M. That is one equation. And let us pick up this equation here. So what does it tell? Ez equal to zero divergence of divergence of E T E M is equal to zero. Okay. 
So, what we can learn from these equations? If you take the curl of that, what we are going to obtain? Curl of curl of the ETEM is equal to zero. That is equal to what? Laplacian of ETEM uh, which is minus plus gradient of divergence of ETEM is equal to zero. This is the open form of the curl of the curl. Divergence of ETEM is zero from this condition that tells you that Laplacian of ETM have to be zero. If the Laplacian of ETM is equal to zero, we can learn something from the wave equations. So look at the wave equation here. And instead of E, say ETEM. That is possible, that is the solution. And you know that the Laplacian of ETM is zero means that this whole coefficient should be zero. Because acting to this, if you replace this ETM, act to the Laplacian, that will be zero from there. And therefore, mu epsilon omega minus k square, so that is not correct, that should be uh, omega square, I think, times ETM have to be zero. So that tells us that what? So let me write this. Uh, if you write a wave equation, Laplacian of ETM and plus mu epsilon omega square minus k square. ETEM have to be zero. This is the wave equation. And I know this is zero from the above statement. And therefore, we obtain a dispersion relation. K is equal to omega times square root of mu epsilon. But what does it tell us? That tells us omega over K is one over square root of mu epsilon. And what was that? phase velocity. Is this phase velocity or is this dispersion relation is the same of free medium like in space without unbounded? Do you remember that the, what kind of dispersion we obtain for the free medium for the plane waves? That was the, exactly the same. So these waves at this point is behaving as if unbounded by a guide. Okay, just a free medium. So let us look at the other properties. This is one property of the wave which is propagating along k such that ez and bz is equal to zero. So at this point, I will pick up more, so therefore, only place I can erase this part, this little part. So again, we are seeing the uh, omega over k phase velocity is 1 over square root of mu epsilon. That is the property of the waveguide. That is the phase velocity. Now, other property. Let us look at the other property. Relation between E and B. So which equation is good? Maybe this one or that one. They give the same information. So let us study let us study that equation. What is zero here? Bz is zero. Okay. If you solve the B transverse, what you are going to obtain? What you are going to obtain? B transverse will be what? 
uh, actually B transverse will be BTEM transverse electromagnetic wave BTEM and what is the value this goes the other side is plus multiplied by I divided to the K and what is omega over K what is omega over K if you divide to the K what is omega over K that is equal to 1 over square to mu epsilon so you have what uh, mu epsilon. So altogether, you will obtain BTEM as square root of mu epsilon z cross ETEM. Again, is this something familiar? The relation? Yes. So K, E, and B are mutually orthogonal to each other as if in the unbounded system okay free medium so this is the second property and third property also interesting so if the curl of e is equal to zero what kind of potential you can associate it what should be the potential you know this from the electrostatic case if curl of e is equal to zero the potential should be uh, gradient of scalar potential. So, curl of ETM is equal to, means that you have some field that could be a gradient of scalar potential. And if you take this information to the substitute the other one, you will get Laplacian of scalar potential is equal to zero. So that means that Laplacian of scalar potential is zero. Is this an electrostatic problem? Yes. So you can find the electric field by solving the Laplacian, you can find that the scalar potential solving the what Laplace equation. Then you can find that the electric field, and then you can calculate the magnetic field. For the TEM modes, this is the situation. But there is one interesting thing here. The generally wave guys has two holes so they are something like that so okay the waves are transmitted in between them they, they can have two holes not only one coaxially so is anybody of you working with such things optics or lasers some of you working, okay. So, the, if you have more than two layer and different potentials, you can solve this Laplace problem and solve the electric field and find the magnetic field. But if you have a single hollow, uh, single hollow waveguide, what you are going to obtain? So let's say this is the side view, or this is the top view. Okay, so this is the side view, or this is the top view, single hollow. So what is the potential inside the waveguide if you solve the Laplace problem? What will be the potential? So you know that the surface of the guide is what equipotential. It's a conductor. If there is nothing in inside, everywhere inside the pot, uh, waveguide has the same potential. That means that, yes, that means that in T, for single hollow of waveguide, TEM modes cannot propagate. Okay, you need two layers in order to propagate the waveguides, at least two, the two different potential differences. Okay? because the equipotential. Now, this was a, 
simple uh, example for TM. And let us try to move on to the uh, other modes. So some time I will spend in these two little uh, space. Then I will open more space. So because I need this, all of them. I need all space. So let me s s start the other possibilities. We will start, we will assume that the ideal uh, conductor, perfect conductor, no energy loss during the reflections. And we will uh, study what is going on. Then we will introduce how we can put the attenuation into the inside, or decaying of the waves, or excitation coefficients later on. I'll do. So, Let us decompose our approach into two pieces. One is the transverse electric waves. Transverse electric waves means that uh, EZ, what is this? EZ is equal to zero. No Z component. Transverse magnetic other choice waves, in that case, Pz equal to zero. In ideal case, we should satisfy some boundary conditions when the wave reflect from the walls. Okay. So for Tm waves, Bz is zero, but Ez is not equal to zero. Ez is not equal to zero. When the wave reflects from the wall it, or it touches to the wall, what should be the z component of the electric field? Where is the z component? Axial direction. So you have some, let's say, uh, Tm modes. You have what? Ez. But when it interacts with the wall, what should be the EZ? Is EZ a tangential component relative to the surface of the waveguide? So this is your waveguide. And this is EZ component. This is the Z axis. So when it touches the let's say perfect conductor, ideal conductor, what should be this the EZ component? What we know for the boundary conditions for the uh, E and B? Curl of E is equal to what? It uh, have to be zero. Uh, so, uh, sorry, N cross E have to be zero at the surface. So the, you know that the so if you say this is the n vector perpendicular to the surface, n cross e should be what? What should be n cross e at the surface when you reach the surface? So what is the condition for the boundary? What is the boundary condition for the tangent? Hmm? Is it the sigma or which one? You have two types of uh, boundary conditions. One is the perpendicular to the boundary, the other tangential. So remember, so remember the following situation. You have a sigma, you have the electric field here, and you have the another electric field. What is the tangential component and perpendicular component? Tangential component is zero. Perpendicular component is the different the surface charge density. Therefore, this is what is this? This is a tangential component relative to the surface of what? Uh, relative to the waveguide. Okay. Therefore, when you go to the surface of the uh, waveguide, Ez component have to be what? Ez component at the surface should be what? Should be zero. No tangential component. 
tangential component means that the z component because z is tangent to the surface of the guide. So that should go to the zero at the surface. So this is one boundary condition we have to satisfy for TEM, TM, TM, transverse magnetic, because transverse magnetic has Z component, but yeah, when you go to the surface of the conductor, tangential component have to be zero. The other one, TE, in that case, Bz is not equal to zero. Bz is not equal to zero. What can we do for that? Uh, If you pick up this one and take the scalar product with the n unit vector, n is perpendicular to the surface. For this boundary condition, do you have any question? Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Now let us take the, this is the cylindrical waveguide and is radial invert direction perpendicular to the surface okay so if, if the cross section it is down and here is up a normal vector to the surface if you take the scalar product with n what we are going to obtain you will get i k B transverse dot n at the surface minus i mu omega epsilon z cross E transverse at the surface is equal to gradient of the transverse B z n at the surface. So I take the scalar product and I want to evaluate at the surface. What is the B dot N at the surface? B transverse dot N is what? Normal component of the magnetic field relative to the surface. And remember the boundary conditions. So if you have B1 and B2, what is the, and n is a new unit vector perpendicular to the surface. What is the condition for the normal component of the Bs at the surface? Hmm? What are the conditions for the boundary conditions at the boundary? So the normal components of, difference of the normal components of the Bs have to be equal to the each other. So, but in the guide, no fields, therefore, this should be zero. And how about this? Z cross E transverse dot N. What is the Z cross E transverse dot N? So, I will look at the problem in the following. So, it is maybe hard to visualize. So, let me write first is in the following form. You have the cross product and dot product. You have three options. One option is this. This is equal to what? N cross E transverse dot Z. This is the rule of the volume of the three vectors. Okay, So these are the same. But geometrically this has some information. What is that information? So can I look at this the problem in this top view? So this is the guide. Look at from the top. So if you look at this from the top view, this is the guide. Where is the N? N is inward. What is E transverse? If, if this is that any vector, that is something like this. 
This should be around xy direction. What is the direction n cross e transverse? Z. Therefore, at the surface, this should be 0. Okay? n cross e transverse is the tangential component relative to the surface of the conductor, and again, they should be vanish. Okay? So, at the surface, this should be 0. And this is left. Is Bz is a scalar function? Yes. What is the gradient of the scalar function? A vector. What is the gradient of the scalar function dot n? So, do you remember that? What is this? That is the definition of what? Derivative of the scalar function bz relative to the normal. So, this is the definition, like a directional derivative. Okay? And at the surface, this should be 0. Now, I will erase this and write the two boundary conditions for Tm and Te waves. Okay? So, if you are ready, I can erase this part. So, the boundary condition is del Bz over del n at the surface have to be 0. So, I am done with the Maxwell's equations. I am going to erase this part. I will need it wave equations. I have the boundary condition for both modes, but before going to do, I will introduce one thing. We will use this if we need it. The, in general, H transverse, H transverse, could be written as plus or minus 1 over impedance. This is called wave impedance. The absolute value between the E and H is the impedance. Is a Z cross E transverse. So this tells you that if you know that the E transverse, you can calculate the H transverse. They are related to each other. So let us see from here. Let us see from here. Example. For Tm, let's say. What is the E transverse for, T, e, T, uh, e transverse for Tm? This is the E transverse. Okay, for Tm, which term will be 0? Bz is 0. Okay, Tm. Tm means that Bz is 0. All the times think about Tm is Bz. Bz is 0. What is E transverse? This stuff. So, E transverse is equal to uh, I over mu epsilon omega square minus k square k times gradient of the transverse Ez. Ez. This is E transverse. Take the Z cross. Divide to the impedance. The impedance value for Tm and Te is given. The impedance value for Tm is k over epsilon omega for Tm. And for Te, 
mu omega over k. So if you divide to the impedance value 1 over z, you will get what? k over epsilon omega. K or epsilon omega. What is this? K cancels. Mu epsilon, uh, sorry, epsilon omega goes up, and if you arrange the term, you will obtain what? I over mu epsilon omega square minus k square. Z cross. epsilon omega gradient of the transverse is that you will get. What is this? Look at this. What is this term? If you look at the B terms, when you put B is equal to 0, and when you put B equal to 0, and when I wrote the B transverse, I forget to write uh, omega here. So in the B transverse, there's the omega here. So, and what is this? This whole bunch is nothing but uh, B transverse over mu. This is H. Because Bz is equal to 0 and omega mu z cross e gradient of E transverse equal to that. So we have another tool. That tool tells us that uh, there is a relation between H transverse and E transverse. So once you know that the E or H transverse, you can find the other one. How you can find the E transverse? take the cross product with the z. So that should be z cross h transverse. This is equal to z cross z cross e transverse. If you open this, you have z dot e transverse, that is equal to 0. z dot z, that is 1, along e transverse. So, so you can make a transition one to another one. So the next thing, the common presentation of these two modes. And that is also relatively easy. So we have the transit we have the passage from the E transverse to the H transverse or vice versa. And there is another thing for TM and T E waves, we have the following. For TM Again, B is equal to zero. What is the uh, E Z, E E transverse? Sorry. So if you say B is equal to zero, this goes to zero, and you can obtain that. That is equal to. Now I'll call this stuff as a gamma square. Gamma square. Okay, mu uh, epsilon, and the same expression is here. The wave equation is gamma square. So, if you call this is a gamma square for T m, B z is equal to zero. Expression for the E transverse becomes what? I over gamma square K gradient of the transverse EZ. If you do the same thing for TE, for TE EZ equal to zero. And if you look at the uh, BZ, what you are going to obtain? Is equal to zero, then you will get the 
P transverse as I or gamma square, same coefficient, K times gradient of the transverse Pz. So for two different waves TM and EZ, we have the relation for the E transverse and B transverse. And in that relation, what is this? E transverse is related with the gradient of the Bz. B transverse is related with the gradient of the transverse of the Bz. Once you know those things, you can calculate the other. How I can find this Bz and Ez from the wave equation? Okay. So now I'll use the presentation of your book. Jackson is calling this a single scalar function psi. Okay. And what is the functional form of the psi? It is depending on x, y, also z. What is the z dependence? So we don't know the psi x, y, but we know that the z dependence, e to the plus minus kz, because we started the problem in that way. So for a given boundary condition, this scalar function could be ez or bz. What wave mode we have? We have different is, different scalar function psi, ez or bz. Now, let us look at the, investigate the wave equation and then try to application. So I don't need this now. But I need it, wave equation, Laplace chain of transverse plus now gamma square. Gamma square is equal to mu epsilon omega square minus k square acting on psi. And that could be Ez for transverse magnetic. That could be equal to Bz for transverse electric. So basically our solutions for Ez will be some dependence on xy, which is satisfying the boundary condition. And the z components is e to the plus minus i k z. Plus minus represents the propagation direction is z or negative. So for a given boundary conditions, we can solve these equations. And we will see that the, this gamma is uh, discrete values. And na namely, this is a, some kind of, maybe not some kind, it's the eigenvalue equation. Okay? It's acting to the Laplacian, and this is the eigenvalue. But here, you are seeing one thing. K and omega is not uh, be like in the free space. In free space, we have shown that the, that was equal to zero. Now that is something common. So you can find that the group velocity and phase velocity, I will find, but I will introduce a quantity, very simple quantity. Uh, write the k square wave number as a 
mu epsilon and mu epsilon omega square and gamma square over mu epsilon. Why it is written in that form is simple. What is the unit of this? If it is frequency, this should be frequency because they are in the open common parenthesis. We call this is a omega lambda square that is cutoff frequency. What could be the meaning of the cutoff frequency? If the frequency higher than cutoff frequency, this is negative. K is imaginary. If K is imaginary, then exponential goes as real because imaginary times imaginary is uh, exponential. That means that the waves will decay. Decay. It cannot propagate. So this is the cutoff frequency. Frequency should be less than this cutoff frequency. Now, if omega is greater than cutoff frequency, wave number is real. then there is a propagation of waves. But if omega is less than cutoff frequency, k lambda is imaginary. So such modes cannot propagate. or such waves cannot propagate. Now, we have k omega dependences. Then we can define that the phase velocity and the group velocity of the waves. Phase velocity is omega over k. So basically, you have the k square and that term. And you can write this in the following form. So that is equal to what? If you take the square of this, take the omega parenthesis, what you are going to obtain? k square of 2 square of mu epsilon take the omega parenthesis here 1 minus what uh, is it omega square lambda over omega square 1 half okay if you take the k square of this both sides take the omega parenthesis and omega over k will be what? What is the omega over k? 1 over square root of mu epsilon, uh, 1 over 1 minus omega square cutoff over omega square 1 half. Okay. What was the condition in order to have the propagating waves? Omega should be greater than omega cutoff. If omega is greater than omega cutoff, this is a number less Yes, but the number is less than 1. Therefore, this is a 
number greater than mu epsilon okay because this number is less than one one minus of this inverse of this is greater than one so you have that condition so this is the phase velocity if the matter is vacuum in the guide then epsilon is epsilon zero mu is mu zero that means that the phase velocity could exceed to the speed of light so you have a group velocity but in the group velocity you have some fringes so this is the group velocity I will estimate and group velocity is made of some addition of waves but the phase velocity could be greater than the group velocity I will show you that because I know that if it is mu zero and epsilon zero phase velocity in the waveguide <laughs> could be uh, greater than speed of light but it is not a physical it is not phase velocity is not carrying as momentum or uh, nothing so f sorry so phase velocity is the phase velocity like a ripples on the waves water waves for example so if you want to calculate that the If you want to calculate that the group velocity, then you should calculate that the d omega over dk. This is the group velocity. How you can find this? Take the derivative of both sides. You will obtain 2k dk is equal to mu epsilon 2 omega d omega, 2's will be cancelled. So do you see this part? Take the derivative of this and d omega over dk, d omega over dk, what is d omega over dk? That is 1 over mu epsilon times what k over omega k over omega so okay correct 1 over mu epsilon times k over omega is the inverse of this term that is square root of mu epsilon 1 minus omega lambda square over omega square 1 half and all together that is equal to 1 over square root of 2 1 minus omega square lambda over omega square 1 half and Waves should be less than the cutoff. So, sorry. So the frequency of the waves should be greater than the cutoff frequency. Therefore, this is less than one over square root of mu epsilon. This is the group velocity at which the energy of the wave is carried. And naturally, even the matter is vacuum mu zero epsilon zero. That is less than the speed of light. So this should be. Now, let us study the possible modes in the waveguide. So, I show you that the boundary conditions, how we can pass the E and H, and I show you that the conditions for the propagation of waveguide, we have a cutoff frequency we can calculate the phase velocity and group velocity. So let us investigate the modes in a simple rectangular waveguide.
degree of x and y and rectangular waveguide the material is mu epsilon so x has the length of a y has the length of b so in the example let us choose the te modes So for T modes, what we are going to find? TE means that the Z component of the electric field is zero. Therefore, we have to find the what? BZ. TE means that the EZ equal to zero. That means that we should calculate the BZ. So the Laplacian is simple for Cartesian coordinate system that is del square over del x square plus del square plus del y square plus gamma square and what is the solution? Solution for scalar function x, y and or you can say that z dependence, but two dimension, there is no dependence on the z. We know that the z dependence are the plane wave form, and this whole thing is the z component. So, what kind of boundary conditions we have for TE modes? This one or that one? Of course, the above one. Then, if you do a separation of variable, what kind of function will satisfy this solution? So, you can make a separation of variables. Psi, psi, x, y could be written, written as x, x, y, y. And insert this, find the uh, new differential equations and propose the solution. What kind of solutions you will obtain? Will you obtain sines or cosines or exponentials? So what kind of solutions you will get? Sine functions, cosine functions or exponentials? Which one? If you put a sine x sine y, if you take the double derivative, it will satisfy this differential equation cosines also will satisfy the differential equations. So basically you can propose a solution so psi of x, y you can do this by a separation of variable which you did in the first part and some mathematical methods of physics courses. So and you should satisfy the boundary conditions. What is the boundary condition? What is the boundary condition? Del psi over del n at the surface have to be zero. Where are the surfaces? X equal to A is a surface. Then therefore, you should have X equal to zero and x equal to a, that should be zero. What is the n vector at x equal to a? What, what is the n? n is what? Is this normal vector to the surface. So therefore, x equal to zero and x equal to a, and at y equal to zero and y equal to b, you should have obtained a zero. So basically, n is what? X direction for left and right, right and left surfaces of the wall. And n is y for up and down. So basically, the form of the solution is the following. A zero, B 
because we want to find that h0 cosine m pi uh, x over a and cosine m pi y over b. So let us look at again, are we satisfying the boundary conditions? If you take the derivative of the solution with respect to the x, you will obtain what? Minus sign m pi x over a. When x equal to 0 and x equal to a, this is 0. That means that satisfying this condition. If you take the derivative with respect to the y, again you will have sine m pi what it be sine and pi uh, and this is again zero in both boundary conditions instead of te modes if you have tm modes then what should be this for tm transverse magnetic the solution should be tm should be ez and then what kind of solutions you have? Ez have to be zero at the surface. Then your solutions should be the cosines or sines for the other mode? Sine. Sine. Because it's, 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 there should be zero. Ez should be zero at the surface, of course. So you can do this by yourself. So if you take this solution, so you have the solution satisfying the boundary condition, so you can do study carefully separation of variables, which you do in different, in the Laplace problem you did, so, and quantum mechanics you did, so you know how to do, so I'm not going to go in detail, but what I'm going to show you if you substitute this solution to here, what you are going to obtain? What you are going to obtain? So, or here, sorry. From the double derivative here, you will have m square pi square over i square sin square. Here, you will have n square pi square over b square and double derivative will be the cosine, sorry, and same function. So that will give you the following. Gamma square is equal to pi square m square over a square n square over b square. So here you are seeing that gamma is not continuous function, is discrete depending on m n values. Why it is discrete? Because in order to satisfy the boundary condition. So it is depending on m n n. So you can calculate that the lowest cutoff frequency that can propagate in the waveguide. So we said that the lowest cutoff frequency is gamma lambda over square of mu epsilon. And if you put this gamma there, that will be pi over square root of mu epsilon m square over a square plus n square over b square one half. So what is the load of so what is the possible values of m and n? So the starting values of m n is what? From the solution that starts from the what? One or zero? Zero is also a solution. 
So if you put both of them zero, it's not good, but one of them could be zero, the other one could be one, and satisfy the solution also. For example, in particular cases, let's say A is greater than B, what is the minimum value of this frequency? If A is greater than B, if A is greater than B, which one should be the one, which, which one should be zero? M or N? So I think M should be one because A is greater than B. So if, this, if you look at the cross-sectional size of the waveguide, and if you say that A is greater than B, and one over A is, uh, makes the smaller in the frequency. So the lowest cutoff frequency for the waveguide is, this waveguide is one zero, and the value is pi over square root of mu epsilon one over A. If the other rise, if B is greater than A, that should be the other one. So this is the minimum value. Uh, and let me write one thing and then try to discuss about uh, uh, try to discuss about the uh, uh, attenuation coefficient in the waveguide. So basically this is H and H, let's say H Z for, let's say, we are working for transverse electric waves and for modes one zero, m equal to one, n equal to zero. And if you put the value there, you will get h zero cosine px over a and the exponential behaves plus minus i k z. If you put the time component, that is minus i omega t. So this is the field, for example. For each mode, we have different fields. And once you know that the hz, you can calculate the b transverse. Once you calculate the b transverse, you can calculate the e transverse. So I'm not going to do this calculation. You can do 